Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. Today, I'm going to present to you all topic regarding the gross anatomy of stomach and also the small intestine. So there are two top, uh, there are two components that I'm going to discuss today: the stomach, the anatomy of the stomach, and also the anatomy of the small intestine. Okay, uh, I'm going to dis uh, discuss on the gross anatomy of the stomach first. Okay, uh, for the stomach, okay, the stomach is located in the, at the upper part of the abdomen. So you can see here, so this is the upper part of the abdomen, this is the lower part of the abdomen. Okay, uh, so stomach is located at the upper part of the abdomen, specifically at the left hypochondriac and also the epigastric region so you can see here so this is the uh, the area where the stomach you can find the stomach lah. okay at the left hypochondriac and also the epigastric region okay and roughly stomach is uh, j in shape okay it is entirely covered by the visceral ter territorium okay okay the visceral territorium is a uh, serosar okay um, the function of the stomach is to store food, okay? Any ingested food that you have consumed, so will be stored in the stomach. And the other function of stomach is to mix uh, the food with the gastric excretion. So there is, there is the two function of the stomach, okay? Okay, you can see here, stomach is roughly like J-shape, okay? Stomach tend to be, to be high hmm, and transversely arranged in short obese person. So you can see here. So this is an example of the person who are obese and short. Usually it is uh, located at the high positions uh, and transversely arranged. Hmm. But uh, so the, uh, okay, for this, uh, uh, whenever the person who are uh, obese person, and short person usually they tend to have a steel horn stomach. Okay. And for those who are tall person and thin person, okay, you can see here, tall person or thin person, usually the stomach is J shape. Okay. This one is like a steel horn stomach. Okay. For those who are short and obese person. And for those who are tall and thin person, so it is a J shape stomach. Okay. J shape. And uh, the stomach shapes and can vary even in the same person. Okay? It depends on the volume of its content, okay? whether the uh, stomach is full with the uh, food or empty stomach. Okay? And the position of the body also will uh, can influence uh, the, uh, the shape of the stomach and also the phase of respiration. So these are the three. Uh, things uh, that can influence uh, the shape of the uh, stomach. Whether the stomach is, uh, they have a content inside there, okay, and also the positions and also the phase of respirations. Okay, so now we're going to discuss on the general features of the stomach that you have to know. Stomach has two opening, okay, the cardiac orifice, okay, the cardiac orifice is the, uh, the first opening, okay, and the pyloric orifice, the second opening that we have, okay, in and out, here going in and here going out, okay, cardiac orifice and pyloric orifice, okay. Uh, and then the stomach also have two curvature, so we have the uh, greater curvature, so you can see here, this is the greater curvature, and the laser curvature, laser curvature is uh, more shorter compared to the greater curvature is more longer, lah. And stomach has two surfaces. It has anterior surfaces and post at the back there we have the posterior surfaces. And the stomach has two notch. Okay, we have the cardiac notch here. Okay, and also the angular notch. Okay, or angular incisor. Okay, so I hope you can remember all the two, two, two here. Okay, two opening, two curvature, two surfaces, and two no notch. The features of the general features on the stomach. Okay, for the laser curvature, so this is the laser curvature, it is a shorter concave border, concave 
okay, concave border of the stomach. And uh, at the curved laser curvature, we have the angular notch. So angular notch that I have shown you just now here, this one, okay. And angular notch is around here, okay. Actually, what is the angular notch? Angular notch actually is a sharp indentation of the lower part, okay, of the lower part, lower part of the, uh, of this curve, lah. okay. Sharp indentation of the lower part of this curve. And the laser curvature, you can see here, it is connected to the river. So it is connected to the river by the laser momentum. So you can see here, this, this is the laser momentum. Okay. Stomach connected to the river by the laser momentum. Okay. On the, the other side, the greater curvature, okay. It is a longer convex border of the stomach. Convex, you can see here, convex border of the stomach. And the greater curvature is connected to the spleen. So this is the spleen, the purple color structure here, spleen. Okay, connected to the spleen by the gastrosplenic ligament. Okay, and it is connected to the transverse colon. So down here we have the transverse colon. Okay, connected to the transverse colon by the greater momentum. So you can see here, this is the greater momentum. Okay, you can see here, this is the gastrosplenic ligament. Okay, gastrosplenic ligament that connect the greater curvature of the stomach to the spleen. Okay. Okay, you can see here, this is another picture just to show you the laser momentum. Okay, and then also the greater momentum. Okay, now we're going to proceed with the next uh, uh, part of, of my presentation on the omental dosa or laser sac. Okay, so you can see here, this is the space that we have at the back of the stomach. Okay, this, this space is known as a omental busa. Okay, or laser sac. Okay, the omental busa or laser sac of the peritoneum is the large compartment or recess of the peritoneal cavity that is located between the stomach. So you can see here, this is the stomach and the posterior abdominal wall. Okay, so the space here is known as omental busa. Okay. The space between the uh, recess, okay, the recess uh, the compartment or, uh, or recess located between the stomach and also the posterior abdominal, okay, the omental bursa. The omental bursa is also located posterior to the laser omentum, okay, so you can see here, this is the laser omentum that's, uh, that connect the laser curvature to the liver. So it's, uh, the omental bursa is also located behind or posterior to the laser omentum. Okay, the anterior and posterior wall of the brusa, okay, anterior and posterior wall of the brusa, it's like freely during the contraction and distension of the stomach. So it gives a considerable freedom to the movement for the movement. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to proceed to the next slide. Okay, so now we're going to open up the stomach. Okay, now uh, we want to see what are the, actually the features of the internal surface of the stomach. Okay. Okay, in empty stomach, the gastric mucosa is thrown into a gastric fold. So you can see here, the surface of the stomach is folded. Okay. So this is the gastric fold or rugae. Uh, rugae run primarily in longitudinal direction. So you can see here, the rugae is uh, run uh, in the longitudinal direction. Okay. Rugae allow for the stomach expansion. So that is the, the, the important of the rugae because it allow the, uh, the stomach to expand. Hmm? And whenever the stomach is full with the food and then the stomach is expand, so the rugae will be flattened. Okay? So the rugae will be, become flattened uh, when the stomach is engorged. Okay? Whenever the stomach is full with the uh, food. Okay? So the rugae the rugae will be become, become flattened. In the region of the laser curvature, okay, the rugae form a canal. Okay, in the uh, in the region of laser curvature, the rugae form a canal. Okay, and uh, this canal is known as a gastric canal. So you can see here, this is the gastric canal. Okay, so what is the function of the gastric canal? It helps uh, to direct food toward the pylorus. Okay, so you can see here, this is the pylorus. Okay. So this is the function of the uh, gastric canal, which is formed by the rugae at the laser curvature. OK, 
Okay, so you can see here, this is the internal surface of the stomach. So you can see here, the stomach mucosa is fall into a, uh, uh, the, the stomach is a uh, surface, uh, internal surface of the stomach is folding. Okay, and this part that uh, folding is known as rugae. Okay, so the importance of this rugae actually is allow for the stomach to distend it whenever it is full with the food. Okay, so you can see here, this is the rugae. Okay, now we're going to proceed uh, with our next uh, presentations. Okay, so stomach, it has four parts. Okay, the cardia, the green color part here is known as cardia. And then above the cardia here, the dome-shaped part here, this is known as a fundus. And then the body, the larger part here, and the pyloric entrum, uh, the pyloric part. Okay, the pyloric part. The pyloric part is further divided into two, the pyloric entrum and also the pyloric canal. Okay, the cardia, it lies adjacent to the gastroesophageal junction, the junction between the esophagus and also the gas, uh, gastric. Okay. Uh, and at the cardia, we have the cardia orifice. Okay. The cardia orifice, the opening uh, to the stomach. And then the fundus here, the dome shapes, uh, is located superior to the cardia orifice. Okay. So slightly above the cardia orifice. Uh, huh? And it's, uh, usually the fundus is related to the diaphragm. Above here, we have the diaphragm. And the fundus is usually full of gas. Lah. So you can find the gas here. And the body, the larger part here, it lies between the uh, fundus and the pyloric entrum. Okay. This is the body, the larger part. Okay. And the pyloric part, pylorus, okay, uh, it extends from the angular notch from here toward the duodenum. Okay, this is the pyloric part. Okay, the pyloric part is subdivided into two, the pyloric entrum and pyloric canal. Okay, pyloric entrum, entrum uh, is extend from the angular notch from here, from the angular notch to the pyloric canal. So this is, this is the extensions of the pyloric entrum. For the pyloric canal, it is surrounded by the pyloric sphincter. Okay, pyloric canal is surrounded by the pyloric sphincter. Uh, how the pyloric sphincter is being formed? Actually, is it is formed by the group of thickened circular smooth muscle. So, the circular smooth muscle is concentrated here. So, it forms a sphincter, the pyloric sphincter. The junction between the pylorus and the denum is marked by the prepyloric vein. Okay. So we can see here, this is the prepyloric vein. Okay, the junction between the pylorus and also the denum. Okay, by the prepyloric vein. Okay, you can see here, uh, this is the pyloric canal. Okay, this is the pyloric sphincter. Pyloric sphincter is formed by the uh, thickened part of the circular smooth muscle. Hmm. So, you can see here, this is the pylorus, okay. Okay, uh, body, fundus, cardia. Okay, now we're going to proceed uh, to discuss on the relation of the stomach. Okay, uh, for the anterior relation, uh, Anterior relation actually is a structure that located anterior to the stomach. Any structure that's uh, located anterior to the stomach, uh, so it can be considered as an anterior relation of the stomach. So what are the structure that related to the stomach anteriorly? So these are the structure, the anterior abdominal wall, diaphragm, and also the left lobe of liver. Okay. For the posterior relations, okay, we have the laser sex uh, or mental busan at the back of the stomach. Uh, and Okay, you can see here, okay, the omental busa, there's a sex uh, that located behind the stomach and pancreas. So you can see here, this is the pancreas located behind the stomach. The uh, spin, yeah, the, uh, is located behind the stomach and left kidney, okay, left kidney, this is the left kidney, this is the right kidney. So the left kidney is located behind the stomach and left supraminal gland, and thrombus colon and mesocolon and the diaphragm, okay. So these are the structure that located uh, posterior to the stomach, okay? Okay. So you can see here, this is the thrombus colon, which is located posterior to the stomach as well. Okay, how about the superior relations? Okay, left dome of the diaphragm. Okay, usually we have a left dome of the diaphragm lah, here, okay, above here. Okay, now we're going to proceed with the stomach bed. Okay, so what is the stomach bed? Usually, the stomach bed is actually formed by the structure that located posterior to the stomach. Okay, 
So whenever you remove the stomach, so here you can see the sketch here actually can be seen whenever you uh, remove the stomach. So we, we don't have a stomach anymore here. So the stomach bed uh, can be seen after removal of stomach. Nah. So at the, uh, at the back of the stomach, we have the omental busa, the pancreas. You can see here, this is the pancreas, upper left part of the kidney, okay? And su uh, upper left part of the kidney and suprarenal gland, uh, celiac artery, uh, celiac ganglia, and also the spleen. So these are the, uh, the structure that you can find, okay? Uh, at the back of the uh, posterior to the stomach, that, uh, this, this, this structure actually it forms the stomach bed. Okay. Okay, just to show you the where is the celiac plexus. Lah. Okay, you can see here this is the celiac plexus because it's now uh, okay, the celiac gang, uh, ganglia, right? This is the ganglia, the celiac plexus. Lah. This is the, the celiac ganglia and also the plexus, it forms the stomach bed as well. Okay, now we're going to proceed to discuss on next part of uh, our presentation today on the artery supply of the gastrointestinal tract. Okay, the celiac artery. Okay, before we discuss on this specifically on what uh, the blood supply to the stomach, so we need to know the artery supply of the GIT tract. Okay, the celiac artery is the artery of foregut. Okay, you have to remember the celiac artery is the artery of foregut. Okay, and it supplies the gastrointestinal tract uh, from the lower third of the esophagus down as far as the middle second part of the denim. So this is the celiac artery, okay, the artery of the foregut. The superior mesentery artery is the artery of the midgut. It supplies from the middle second part of the denim until the distal third of the transverse colon. So this is the extensions of how, uh, where actually the superior mesentery artery is supplied to. Okay? And then for the inferior mesentery artery is the artery of the hindgut. Okay, it supply the uh, to the large colon from the distal third of the thrombus colon to the halfway of the halfway down the anal canal. Okay, so you have to know this is the artery of the gastrointestinal tract. Okay, so the artery, supra mesentery artery, and intra mesentery artery. Okay, now we're going to discuss on uh, specifically on the arteries of the stomach. Okay, these are the artery of the stomach. We have the right gastric artery, left gastric artery, short gastric artery, left gastro omental artery, and the right gastro omental artery. Okay, for the left gastric artery, <coughs> it arises from the celiac trunk, okay? And it's applied to the laser curvature. So you can see here, this is the left gastric artery. So it arises from the celiac trunk. So you can see here, this is the celiac trunk, okay? And the right gastric artery, it most often arises from the hepatic artery and it's applied to the laser curvature, okay? So you can see here, this is the uh, right gastric artery, okay? So it's applied to the laser curvature of the stomach, okay? And right gastro artery, it arises from the gastro artery. So this is a right gastro artery, okay? So a, a right gastro artery is arises from the gastro artery. Okay, you can see here. Okay, this is more clear. Lah. So you can see here, this is the right gastro omental or gastro artery. So right gastro or right gastro artery is the same. The same artery, okay. Either you write right gastroepiphytic artery or right gastroepiphytic artery, the same thing, okay. So you can see here, so right gastroepiphytic artery is arises from the gastroduodenal artery, okay. So if you, uh, you can see here, uh, and the artery that I have uh, mentioned just now, the right gastric artery is arises from the hepatic artery, okay. And then the left <coughs> left gastric artery is arises from the celiac artery or celiac trunk, okay. And then uh, the left gastro mental artery, left gastro mental artery, if you see here, this is the left gastro mental artery. It is arises from the, uh, from the splenic artery, hmm? arises from the distal part of the splenic artery. And it's applied to the greater curvature of the stomach. Okay, so you can see here, this is the left gastro mental artery or gastro, left gastro epiplate artery. It arises from the distal part of the splenic artery. Okay, and then we have the short gastric artery. Okay, short gastric artery, four to five huh? uh, artery, okay, that arises from the distal part of the spinning artery, right? So the distal part of the spinning artery, and it's supplied to the fundus of the stomach. So that is the uh, arteries to the stomach that you have to know. Okay, it's very simple. Okay, mm. okay, and for the vein of the stomach, 
uh, the vein it carry the similar name like the artery. So you can see here we have the left gastric vein, we have the right gastric vein, we have the short gastric vein, we have the left gastro-omental vein, we have the right gastro-omental vein. Okay, we carry the similar name like the artery. Okay, right gastro-omental, left gastro-omental, short gastric vein, uh, left gastric vein, and the right gastric vein. Okay, so you have to know where actually this vein will drain into. Okay, the where is the vein drain into the which part of the vein? Okay, so for example here the right gastric vein it drain into the portal vein. Okay, the left gastric vein it drain into the portal vein. Okay, so you can see here, huh? this is the um, right gastric vein, right? Okay, and this is the, sorry, this is the left gastric vein. Okay, uh, I correct huh? my word huh? just now. This is the left gastric vein. Okay, this is the right gastric vein. So we can see the right gastric vein, uh, the, the, left, the left gastric vein, the left gastric vein, uh, and the right gastric vein will drain into the portal vein. Okay? Okay, left gastric vein drain into the portal vein, right gastric vein will drain into the portal vein. Okay, how about the short gastric vein? Okay, the short gastric vein will, uh, this is the, okay, short gastric vein. Okay, you can see here, this is a short gastric vein, right? So uh, the, the short gastric vein will drain into the, what is this? This is the splenic vein. Okay. Okay. Short gastric vein will drain into the splenic vein. The left gastroomital vein. Okay. You can see here. This is the left gastroomital vein. Okay. This is the left gastroomital vein. It will also drain into the splenic vein. Okay. okay. And the right gastroomital vein. It will drain into the superior mesentery vein. Okay. You can see here. This is the right gastroomital vein. Will drain into the superior mesentery. But eventually, all the vein will drain into the portal system. This is the most important thing. Finally, all the vein will drain into the portal vein. Okay. Okay. How about the nerve supply of the stomach? Okay. It is supplied by the sympathetic nerve supply from the T6 to T9 segment. Okay. Of the spinal cord. Okay. So you can see the count. Try to count here. T6, T7, T8, and T9 huh? of the spinal cord. So this sympathetic nerve uh, will pass us to the celiac plexus. Okay, this is the celiac plexus. Okay, via the splanchic nerve. Okay, how about the parasympathetic? Parasympathetic nerve supply from the anterior and posterior vagal trunk. Okay. Okay, for the lymphatic drainage. Okay, the lymph from the anterior and posterior surface of the stomach are drained by the lymphatic vessel toward the curvature where the node mostly located. Okay, for example, uh, we have the Gastric knot. So you can see here the gastric knot. This is the light pink color here. This is the gastric knot. So it will drain the laser curvature. Okay. Uh, the gastro omental knot, it will drain the uh, greater curvature. Okay. So the different vessel from, from this knot, the gastro omental knot, and also the gastric knot, hmm, will uh, drain into a celiac limb knot. So you can see here. Based on the color here, the celiac lymph node is a bluish in color. Okay, this is the celiac lymph node. Okay, the celiac lymph node is located near to the celiac artery. Okay, celiac trunk or celiac artery. Okay, you can see here this is the gastric node. Okay, uh, that drain the laser curvature of the stomach and gastro omental node drain the greater curvature of the stomach. Okay. Okay, for the applied anatomy part. Okay. The common side of the peptic ulcer is located along the laser curvature. This is the most important thing. How you differentiate between the ulcer due to the cancerous and ulcer due to the peptic ulcer. Usually the uh, ulcer due to the due to the peptic ulcer usually is located around the uh, along the laser curvature. But for the cancer, the, uh, the ulcer that is associated with cancer is usually located along the greater curvature. And then for the atrosia uh, signs, uh, uh, usually. In uh, for this sign, uh, the left supraclavicular limb node will be enlarged uh, if the person having a carcinoma of stomach uh, due to the spread of cancer along the thoracic duct. Okay, that is the trouser sign. Uh, left supraclavicular limb node will be enlarged. Okay, and then congenital hypertrophic uh, pyloric stenosis. Okay, this is another important, uh, uh, important things that you have to know uh, regarding the uh, congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Hmm? And then the other thing is cholesterol or surfigural reflux and diaphragmatic or hiatus hernia. Okay, this part you can learn on your own. Hmm? 
Okay. So you can see here. Okay, how the hypersenia happen? You can see here. This is the part of the hypersenia. Okay, uh, lower esophageal sphincter and hypersenia. Okay, the psychologic and anatomic factor that prevent the reflux of the gastric juice from the stomach into the esophagus include the following. Okay. Uh, the lower esophageal sphincter, lower esophageal sphincter must have a normal length and pressure and normal number of episodes of transient relaxation. Okay. Relaxation in the absence of swallowing. Okay. The gastroesophageal junction must be located in the abdomen. This is the most important thing. Okay. Gastroesophageal junction must be located in the abdomen. Should it should not be in the thoracic part. Okay, it should be in the abdomen. Okay. So the uh, what, how, why this is important. Okay. Because uh, so that the diaphragmatic crura can assist the action of the lower esophageal sphincter. That is the reason why the this junction should be located in the abdomen. Okay, because the diaphragmatic crura okay, will assist the action of the lower esophageal sphincter. Thus, functioning as a extrinsic uh, sphincter, the, the diaphragmatic crura will function as an extrinsic sphincter. Okay, and the presence of a hypersiena hernia will disrupt mm, the synergistic action and can promote the flux. Mm. And then now we're going to proceed with the gross anatomy of the small intestine, the second component of our my lecture. Okay, for the small intestine, it extends from the pylorus of the stomach to the cecum. Okay, so you can see this is the pylorus pyloric part of the stomach. So extend from here, from the duodenum to the toward the uh, cecum. Okay, so this is the cecum. So here, this is the end point. This is the initial point. End point, initial point. Uh, small intestine is composed of three parts, duodenum. Duodenum is the shortest part. And duodenum is two-fifths of the small intestine. Ilium is three-fifths of the small intestine. So you can see here, this is a small intestine uh, in real life. Okay, the small intestine, it has a mesentery that attach the small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall. Okay, that is the function of mesentery. Eh? It attaches the small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall. Except most part of the denim. Except most part of the denim. Hmm? Usually the small intestine it has a mesentery. Hmm? Except most part of the denim, it does not have a mesentery. Okay, uh, so means that this mesentery actually it hang. It try to hang the uh, small intestine okay, inside the abdominal abdominal cavity. And this mesentery is being attached to the posterior abdominal. Okay. And uh, for the small intestine, it has circular fold. So whenever you open up the small intestine, hmm, you can see there is a circular fold or plica circularis. Lah. Except the first part of the denim. Hmm, except the first part of the denim, hmm, uh, it does not have a plica circularis. It does not have a circular fold in the first part of the denim. And the distal part of the ilium. So this is the most important exception you have to remember. Huh? The first, ex, uh, the first part of, except the first part of the denim and the distal part of the uh, ilium, it does not have a circular fold. And the other thing that you have to remember here, uh, the small intestine attached, small, uh, it is uh, having a mesentery except most part of the denim. Okay, the exception part is very important. So we can see here, this is the mesentery. Okay, mesentery. So mesentery is attached to the small intestine. Hmm? Except uh, most part of uh, most of the duodenum, okay, to the posterior abdominal wall. Okay, so mean that this mesentery function is to hang this uh, small intestine toward the. Uh, uh, this part will be attached to the posterior abdominal. Wall. So it will hang the, uh, hanging the small intestine in the abdominal cavity. But somehow most of the part of the duodenum uh, does not have a mesentery. Okay, uh, we start to discuss on the denim first. Okay, so the denim is C shape. Okay, in the opposite direction. Okay, hey, no, sorry, it's uh, in the C C direction. Sorry, so uh, it's a C shape, not an opposite direction. Okay, uh, so it's a C. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I correct my word again. So, uh, 
the the denim is C shaped tube. Okay. Okay. Uh, the C shaped tube here it surround the head of the pancreas. Okay. Okay, you can see here this is the head of pancreas, so it embraces or surround the head of pancreas. Okay, and uh, it is the shortest part of the uh, small intestine. The length is about only 25 centimeter in length. And it also the widest part of the small intestine. There is uh, two imp most important, uh, more, uh, there are two, uh, there, these are the two most important facts that you have to remember. It is the, the shortest part of the small intestine and the widest part of the small intestine. Okay. So how it begin? So it begin at the parallel part of the stomach. Okay, so you can see here the stomach has been removed. Okay, begin here lah. Okay, at the level of the L1. So if you measure this part to it, uh, and then draw a line to the back of the body, so you can see it passes through the L1 level. Okay, number vertebra number one. And the duodenum it will be, uh, end by becoming continuous with the jejunum. So you can see here, this is the jejunum. Okay, it will con continuous with the jejunum at the duodenal jejunal junction, the junction between the duodenum and the Jejunum. Okay, duodenum. It is a retroperitoneal organ. Okay, except for the beginning of the first part, first inch of the first part, it is an intraperitoneal organ. The remaining part is retroperitoneal organ. Okay. So whenever you open up the duodenum, so these are the features that you can see. The proximal part of the first part of the dome is smooth. Okay, this is the most important thing that you have to remember. The proximal part of the first part of the dome is smooth. Now you can see here the proximal, the proximal part. Okay, the first centimeter. Okay, the proximal part of the first part of the dome. Okay, it's around first inch of first part of the dome. Okay, okay, the proximal part of the first part of the dome, it is smooth like this. And the remainder of the duodenum, it has a circular fork, the plica circularis. Okay, the remaining part of the duodenum, it has a plica circularis. Okay, what is important features of this plica circularis? This fork are permanent and cannot be flattened out by distension. Not like the rugae that we have in the stomach, but plica circularis, it is maintained. The shape is maintained. Okay, although whenever the duodenum is distended, lah. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to proceed to the discuss on the part of the duodenum. Okay, the duodenum it has four parts: the first part, the superior part, the second part, the descending part, the third part, the horizontal part, and the fourth part. Okay, the ascending part. Okay, for the for the first part of the duodenum, so this is the first part of the duodenum. It run backward, and uh, it run upward and backward at the level of the L1, lumbar vertebra number one, at the transpadoric plane. Okay, the transpadoric plane is passes through this part. Nah. Okay, transpadoric plane. Uh, first two centimeter uh, is known as ampulla. Okay, the duodenal cap. Okay, so I collected back, back uh, what I have mentioned just now is. Ah uh, yeah. Uh, 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 okay, the first two centimeter actually, the first inch one inch. Okay, the first inch. Okay, uh, one inch uh, is equal to two centimeter. Okay, the first two centimeter. Okay, the first inch. Okay, one inch or first two centimeter. This part, uh, uh, the first part, okay, the first part, okay, the first two centimeter of the first part, or the first one inch of the first part of the denim, okay, because the one centimeter is equal to uh, one uh, two centimeter is equal to one inch, lah. and this part is known as ampulla. Okay, actually, I uh, no need for me to correct my word, lah, okay, because just now I actually give a figure in, in the form of inch, but here is in the form of the centimeter, okay. So the first two centimeter or the first uh, the the first inch of the first part of the uh, duodenum is known as ampulla, okay. And this part is known as a duodenal cap, okay. So the ampulla is relatively dilated. So you can see here ampulla is a dilated portion, and it has a smooth wall. So you can see here it uh, the the surface here is smooth, and uh, the 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 best uh, no sorry the specific features of this part is it has a mesentery okay whenever it has a mesentery mean that it is mobile it can move okay it is an intraperitoneal organ 
Okay, so there is the special features about the first two centimeter part of the first part of the genome. Okay, the ampulla. And the remaining three centimeter, it does not have mesentery, and is immobile retroperitoneal organ. Okay, so that is regarding the first part of the genome. Okay, so it is divided into two lah. the first two centimeter and the distal three centimeter. And how about the relation of the first part of the denim? Okay. Okay, you can see here, this is the first part of the denim. Okay, the anterior relation. So we have the liver and then the gallbladder and the anterior part here. And posteriorly, we have the gastrodenal artery, common bile duct. So you can see here, this is the uh, common bile duct. Okay. And then uh, we have the portal vein as well at the back of the uh, duodenum, the first part of the duodenum, and then the inferior vena cava. But these two components, you, you only can see if you remove everything, all the structure there. Okay? But here, it only shows the common button. Okay? Okay. Uh, how about the superior relations? So, superior, it is related with the epiploid foramen. So, this opening there. So this opening is known as a epiploid foramen. Okay. How about the inferior relations? Okay. Inferiorly, it is related with the head of the pancreas. Down here we have the head of the pancreas. Okay. Okay. So hmm, you can see here. Hmm, these are the first part of the duodenum. Okay. So just now I mentioned, right? We have the gastrodenal artery, the posterior part of the first part of the duodenum, right? So you can see here. This is the Gastro didn't artery. Okay. And not only that, we also have what? Just now. The inferior vena cava. Uh, inferior vena cava, you have to remove everything. Uh, from there, you can see that after you remove all the structure here. But here, you can, uh, whenever you remove the first part of the denim, you can see there is a common bug duct. Okay. Okay. This is the epiploid foramen. Okay. Okay. How about the second part of the denim? Okay. The second part of the denim. It run along the right side of the L2, okay, L2 toward the L3, okay, lambda lambda vertebra number two, lambda to the lambda vertebra number three, on the right side, okay, not on the left side, on the right side, and it curve uh, around the head of the pancreas, okay, curve around the head of the pancreas. So, so you, this is the head head of pancreas, curve around the head of pancreas, and the common bladder and main pancreatic duct open into its medial wall. So you can see here, common bladder and main pancreatic duct it opens on its medial wall. Okay, common bladder and main pancreatic duct unite. It will unite. You can see here, it unite together to form a hepatopancreatic ampulla. Okay, or ampulla of better lah. That open as a major duodenal papilla. So you can see here, uh, inside here, you can see there is a major duodenal papilla. Okay. Okay, so how, how about the, the relation of the second part of the denim? Okay, for the anterior relation, okay, definitely we have the gallbladder here and then the liver. Okay, try to imagine uh, in uh, anterior, uh, in front here we have the liver, but it's not present here. And then we also have the uh, transverse colon, so you can see a transverse colon. Huh? The coil of the small intestine, okay, try to imagine we have the coil of small intestine. Okay, around here, but somehow it's not shown in the picture. The same thing also, the liver is not shown here. Okay, but supposedly in front here we have the liver. So that is the interior relation of the the second part of the denim. Okay, so only uh, the uh, visible here is a uh, the gallbladder and also the uh, thrombus colon. Okay, how about the posterior relations? Okay, we have the right kidney and right ureter. Okay, right kidney and also the right ureter. But uh, the these two components also not shown in this picture here. So you have to remove all, everything here. So in, in order for you all to see the this two uh, this two structure, and for the medial relations, uh, it is related with the head of pancreas on the medial side here. Okay, head of pancreas, bile duct, okay, common bile duct, right, and pancreatic duct. Okay, main pancreatic duct. Okay. Okay, the third part of the denim, so this is the third part of the denim. It runs horizontally, okay, to the left, uh, toward the left, uh, on the subcostal plane. So uh, whenever it moving from the right to left, right to left, right, to the left, right, moving to, to the left, it will cross 
entry to the inferior vena cava. So mean that at the back of this, the third part of the venum, we have the inferior vena cava. So in, in order to, to, to see the inferior vena cava, you have to remove all the structure. Uh, the inferior vena cava is located behind. And also iota, not only inferior vena cava, iota also located behind the third part of the duodenum. Okay. And, uh, but somehow, uh, this third part of the duodenum is located posterior to the superior mesenteric artery and vein. So the superior mesenteric vein and superior mesenteric artery will cross in front to the this third part of the duodenum. Okay. And here, how, uh, where, uh, here, whenever it cross from the right to the to the left side, uh, it, uh, the location of the the level of the lumbar vertebra, vertebra will be at the lumbar vertebra number three. Okay. Oh, okay. How about the anterior relations? Okay. This definitely the anterior relation is a uh, the the roots of small intestine mesentery. So you can see here this is actually the root of the small intestine mesentery that we have cut off. So this is the small intestine mesentery that we cut off already. Okay, superior mesentery uh, artery and vein. So this is the superior mesentery vein. This is the superior mesentery artery that cross entry to the third part of the duodenum, the third part of the duodenum. And then in front here, you also have a coil of small intestine. And for the posterior relations, we have the right ureter at the back there, but it's not shown in this picture. And also we have the inferior vena cava and also the iota. For the superior relations, we have the head of the pancreas. So this is the head of the pancreas. And how about the fourth part of the denim? Okay, the fourth part of the denim, okay, it ascends going upward, yeah, moving upward yeah, to the left of the iota. Okay, to the left iota. Okay, to the le uh, to the level of the L two. Okay, from the L three moving toward the L two level. Okay, and uh, the fourth part of the duodenum, it joins the jejunum, join the jejunum, this is the jejunum, huh? at the duodenal jejunal junction. And this junction is supported by a ligament, and this ligament is known as a ligament of treats. Okay. The anterior relations, so in front here, we have the coil of small intestine, and at the back there, we have the iota. Okay. So you can see here. <laughs> okay, this is the suspensory muscles of the duodenum. Especially the muscle of the denim, the ligament of the treats so that, that uh, attach to the duodenal jejunal junctions. Okay, that maintain this fracture, the duodenal jejunal fracture. Okay, the same thing that I have mentioned just now. We have the first part, second part, third part, and the fourth part. Okay, and all the structure that I have mentioned just now. Okay, for the arterial supply of the denim, upper half of the denim. First part and second part is supplied by the superior pancreatal duodenal artery. And the superior pancreatal duodenal artery is a branch of the gastro duodenal artery. Lower half, the third part and fourth part is supplied by the inferior pancreatal duodenal artery, uh, a branch of the superior mesenteric artery. So you can see here, this is the superior pancreatal duodenal artery. This is the inferior pancreatal duodenal artery. The superior and inferior pancreatal duodenal artery will anastomose. So you can see here it's connected to each other. Okay, with anastomose. Okay, uh, and it forms the anastomotic loop between the synec trunk and superior mesenteric artery. Okay, so it forms a connection. The anastomotic, okay, anastomose, uh, anastomotic loop. And for the vein of the duodenum, the duodenal vein follow the artery. Uh, it's carry uh, the vein of the. Uh, the vein of the duodenum it carries a similar name like the artery. Lah. We have the superior pancreatal duodenal vein that drain into the portal vein, the inferior the inferior pancreatal duodenal vein. Okay. So this one you yeah, try to make a correction on this part. Okay. Inferior pancreatal duodenal vein okay, will drain into the superior mesenteric vein. Okay. So this part lah, is inferior pancreatal duodenal vein. Okay. Okay, now we're going to move to the jejunum and ileum. Okay, for the jejunum and ileum, uh, jejunum begin at the duodenal jejunal junction. Okay. Okay, you can see here the reddish color part here is actually belong to the uh, jejunum, and the, the remaining part here, the yellow part, mm, consider yellow lah. Yellow part here is a uh, ileum. The ileum end at the ileocecal junction. So this is the cecum. 
Together, jejunum and ilium, uh, the length is about six to seven meter long. Jejunum makes up two fifth of the length. And each, uh, each part here, jejunum and ilium, it has a distinctive features. But there is a gradual changes from the one to another. Lah. No clear demarcation between jejunum and also the ilium. Jejunum and ilium are freely mobile. Okay, uh, jejunum and ilium is freely mobile and are attached to the posterior abdominal wall by the mesentery of small intestine. Same thing that I have mentioned earlier, right? Uh, so the mesentery here, it hang the, uh, this jejunum and ilium and it, uh, this mesentery is being attached to the posterior abdominal wall. Okay, so it is mobile lah, inside the, uh, mobile inside the abdominal cavity. Okay, most of the jejunum, it lie in the umbilical, umbilical regions, uh, jejunum lie in the umbilical region. The ilium lie in the hypogastrics uh, and also the inguinal region. Okay. Now we're going to proceed with the next one, the mesentery of the jejunum. Okay. So you can see here the mesentery. Mesentery is a fan-shaped fold of the peritoneum. So the function is of the function of the mesentery is to suspend jejunum and ilium to the posterior abdominal wall. Okay. It hang the jejunum and ilium and be attached to the posterior abdominal wall. So inside the mesentery, we have the blood vessel. So you can see here, this is the blood vessel that located that present inside the mesentery. We also have the lymphatic vessels, uh, lymphatic, uh, lymphatic vessels, the nerve, and also the fatty tissue. That's why the color of the mesentery is uh, yellowish in color. Okay, so it contains the fatty tissue. The general mesentery contains less fat compared to the ileum. Okay, this is the root of mesentery. Okay, the root, the origin, the the original where actually the mesentery is actually present okay the original root the root okay the root the original source of the mesentery okay the root of mesentery the root of mesentery is about 15 centimeter in length okay it extends from the duodenal jejunal junction left side of the l2 vertebra to the iliocolic junction and right sacro sacroiliac junction the root of mesentery it crosses the following structure, the third part of the denum, abdominal iota, IVC, inferior vena cava, right ureter, right source major, right testicular or laborian vessel. So this, the root of mesentery will cross the following structure that I have mentioned just now. Okay. So this is the root of mesentery. Okay. Okay, the arterial supply of the jejunum and ilium. Jejunum and ilium are supplied by the superior mesentery artery. So this is the superior mesentery artery. Okay, uh, this superior mesentery artery will branch off. There are, there are many branches that arises from the superior mesentery artery. Okay, we have the jejunal branches and also the ileal branches. Jejunal branches supply to the jejunum, ileal branches uh, supply to the ileum. Okay, for the superior mesentery artery, okay, it arises from the iota behind the neck of pancreas. So you can see here, this is the superior mesentery artery. Okay, superior mesentery artery, it arises from the iota, okay, behind the neck of pancreas. So actually, we have cut off the neck of pancreas here, okay. It arises from, uh, arises from iota behind the neck of pancreas. We have cut off the neck of pancreas here. So uh, because we want to show the, the origins of the superior mesentery artery, okay. And then uh, uh, the superior mesentery artery, it passes anterior to the third part of the denum. So you can see it crosses anterior to the third part of the denum. Okay. And it runs obliquely. It not run uh, vertically, it run obliquely. Hmm? Obliquely. Okay. In the root of the mesentery. So it run within the root of mesentery. Okay, the root of mesentery. To the right iliac fossa, going move toward here, toward the right iliac fossa, okay, and sending many branches to the jejunum and ilium. So we have, you can see here, this is the jejunal branches, this is the ileal branches, okay. And uh, these branches we passes within the mesentery, lah. then this artery will uni unite. So you can see here, this artery will unite, okay, whenever it unite, it will form the loops, okay, the loops, okay, and these loops or arches is known as the arterial arcades. So you can see here, this is the arterial arcade. Okay, the arterial arcade from the loops. And then uh, the vasa recta is arises from the arterial arcade. So the vasa recta here, it arises from the arterial arcade. This is the branches that arises from the arterial arcade, the vasa recta. Okay. The, the vasa recta do not elastomose within the mesentery. 
Okay, you can see here it is an artery, lah. so it will not anastomose. Okay, within the mesentery, uh, within the mesentery, the vasa recta, vasa recta, uh, it is not uh, anastomose within the mesentery. Okay, it is an artery, lah. So you can see here, this is the vasa recta. It uh, arises from the artery arcade. Uh -huh. Okay, for the venous drainage of the jejunum and ileum, okay, the it, it is drained by the super, superior mesentery vein. The vein is correspond to the branches of the superior mesentery artery. Okay, it carries a similar name like the uh, superior mesentery artery. Carry the similar name. So we have the superior mesentery vein. So you can see here this uh, on the left hand side here we have the superior mesentery artery, and this is the blue color vessel here is the superior mesentery vein, and this vein will eventually drain into the superior. Okay, all the vein here, hmm, the uh, the branches will uh, will drain into the superior mesentery vein. Okay, the small small blue color branches here will drain into the superior mesentery vein. Okay, these are the major differences between the jejunum and ileum that you have to remember. Okay, jejunum is larger in diameter and thicker wall compared to ileum. Hmm? Larger diameter, jejunum has a larger diameter and thicker wall compared to the ileum. Okay, and the second uh, <coughs> differences is jejunum it has less prominent artery arcade compared to the ileum. So the artery arcade in the jejunum is less prominent, less prominent right compared to the ileum. Is more prominent. Ilium is more prominent, but in jejunum, the artery arcade is less prominent. And then jejunum has longer vasa recta. You can see here that the vasa recta is longer in jejunum compared to the ilium. Ilium is a short uh, vasa recta. Jejunum contains less fat. You can see here uh, the uh, the yellowish part here is less, right? Compared to here, most of the part is yellowish in color because it contains more fat in ilium. But here, jejunum is contains less fat lah, compared to the ilium. Mesentery lah, for the mesentery, for the mesentery of the uh, jejunum, mesentery, the fat in the mesentery. Okay, the circular fault are well more well developed and usually large, tall, closely packed in jejunum. Okay, you can see here, the uh, circular fault is uh, more uh, more prominent, more prominent, well developed in jejunum compared to the Ilium, but sometimes uh, at the distal part of the ilium, the distal part of the ilium usually it is absent. Distal part of the ilium. And the uh, ilium contains prominent lymphoid nodule. Okay, this is another, another differences that you have to know. The ilium contains prominent lymphoid nodule. You can see here, this is the lymphoid nodule. Okay, the pale patches lah, compared to the jejunum. Okay, this is the special features about the ilium. It has a prominent uh, pale patches. Okay, or lymphoid nodule. Okay, the same thing that I have uh, mentioned just now. Okay, and for the applied anatomy part, uh, okay, this part I think you can read on your own. Huh? Okay, the portal system does not have buff. Nah. In case of portal venous obstruction, there will be a congestion at the site of the postal cavern anastomosis. Okay, this is the site of the, uh, the, the, the congestion. Okay, the umbilicus, the vein of the esophagus will, will cause a very cyst, uh, will cause a development of very cyst. The lower part of the anal canal, which cause the development, the development of the hemorrhoid, bare area of liver, and retrocolic area. Okay, in case if there is an obstruction that happen, okay, portal venous obstruction. Okay, thank you. I hope you enjoyed uh, my presentation.